everybody, Kerry Benson from Essential Nails. Really excited today to show you this airbrushing technique. I did the Essential Nails airbrushing course and although it's a little bit difficult to get going at first, I use it a lot at Christmas. I'm just going to demonstrate on the nail train hand very quickly um, airbrushing one nail and at the end of this bit of video I've quickly edited down little snapshots of a whole set of red and white nails that I did. So here we go. I'm just refining this plastic tip to fit um, from Essential Nails using the Essential Nails brush on glue as well. I've sped it up a little bit because it's uh, very time consuming. Now we're going to just pinch in the little tabs. I want to keep the nail a reasonable length because obviously the smaller the nail, the less space you have for design work. I file the free edge in the side walls and refine the shape first before I work on blending the tip in. So I'm only filing on top of the plastic, not what would effectively be the natural nail surface. And I just keep stopping and checking, dusting off to make sure that I get a lovely blend. Now a lot of people use no blend tips, but I tend to find they don't fit the nail trainer hand very well. So you blended your tip in, I'm going to apply these two different colours of glitter and they were from the Essential Nails High Voltage Pack. I'm using white acrylic and clear acrylic with the glitter embedded in the nail. I've just applied a little bit of white here just to cover the blend and this is only for colour so no strength and structure involved yet. I'm just picking up a very small bead of clear on my brush, dipping it into the glitter and then applying to the nail and with a little tapping motion spreading it out. Now I've applied clear to the nail plate area just so that you're not having glitter right up next to the nail plate because it makes the removal a little harder then. Over this layer i am put purple then I've gone into my iridescent white or clear glitter. They're both quite chunky and they're not going to be solid There's white showing through, there's purple showing through, there's iridescent showing through, and it's just a mix of different colours because this design is full of layers. The layering of the glitter, the layering of the clear acrylic, the layering of the paintwork, it all adds to the depth of the design. So they've just capped the nail with clear for strength and structure, checking your apex and making sure you're happy with the nail. Then we're gonna file the shape in, just all the basic stuff really. The interesting part of this design is definitely when we get to the airbrushing stage. God, it looks so brutal, doesn't it, when I speed it up? <laughs> So filing the whole nail smooth. If you don't have enough clear acrylic coating the glitter particles, you'll find you'll end up filing them back off. So that's why you need to make sure that when you encapsulate them, you encapsulate all of it. So I've dusted it off. Here are little self-adhesive stencils, tiny little templates. And they don't last forever, because obviously the sticky wears out, but um, you stick them on. Got my airbrush with just plain white paint in it, that's all. I've tested it, and I'm just spraying into the centre of the stencil. 
And when I've coated the area with enough paint, I just press down air only until it dries. It's a quick process and it leaves you with beautiful little snowflakes. So I'm just going to spread the stencils around. I've got different sized ones. Do the same again here. You can create this design easily with stamping plates, but you cannot create the same effect with a stamping plate as you can with airbrushing when it comes to using the negative of the stencil. So this is the negative, the, the cutout bit out of the middle. So I'm going to stick this on the nail and I'm going to do the opposite, opposite effect where we do an overspray. So I've stuck it down. I'm going to target the paint right dead center in the middle of the negative. Very carefully just spraying the stencil so that the overspray outline of the snowflake is left there. It gives the nail design so many different dimensions with the colour and the glitter and the solid snowflakes and the negative snowflakes. I just thought it was fun and it makes them look quite interesting. You have to be careful about peeling off the negatives though. That's why I've got some little tweezers. So you can see I've sprayed lots of little snowflakes on and now that I'm happy with the design that I've laid on, I'm just top coating it with the no wipe top coat. directly on. Now the beauty of the airbrushing is it dries so quickly. It's almost powdery so and it's very thin. If you're trying to paint snowflakes by hand one is very difficult to get them perfect and two is really time consuming. Then you've got to wait for the paint to dry. So in salon when you're creating lots of different Christmas nails at this time of year people want snowflakes. It's so quick. So I'm just curing that no wipe top coat layer. And to add another dimension again, I'm using the white gel paint that Essential Nails has just released. So I'm taking one or two of the larger snowflakes here and I'm going to paint by hand over one or two of them. Just gives a little raised feel to it. And into this gel, before it's cured, I'm going to use that sugaring effect where you sprinkle on some iridescent glitter or some just some white glitter so that you have some proper textured snowflakes. I don't do all of them. It tends to be too much really. And they're so busy. Um, there's a lot going on with this design already anyway. So it's just a matter of taste as to know how far to keep going really. I usually leave it down to my client, but then they're quite happy to just have loads of crazy stuff on their hands at Christmas. So I'm just doing this partial snowflake on the tip um, and so here with some white glitter or some iridescent transparent whatever you've got I mean you, you can use any color you like I mean as long as it's fine so I've sprinkled onto the gel there and I've just shaken off the excess and then that's going to go into the lamp and cure then. I tend to make sure I put it in for a minute so that it's fully cured. And then when it comes out of the lamp, I have got a, a little toothbrush that I use. It's quite a soft one, 
but we just brush off the excess. So you can see multitude of layers going on in that design there with just a little hint of glitter sparkling through from underneath. This um, was uh, another set I did, red and white, with a little bit of silver. And it was very time consuming. I think the entire set of nails might have taken me about two, three hours. So I've taken little snippets of the process and just sped it up here just to give you a little bit of an insight into how I create a whole set of these. Applying all the glitter and then I cap it in with clear acrylic. This And because of the coverage of the airbrush painting and the stenciling, it doesn't have to be neat or symmetrical. It, it just can be very random. Mix the glitters up however you want. So I've used the normal adhesive stencils and the blanks from inside. You can see I've used that one already. That's why it's white. It's it's uh, time consuming, but then it's just methodical. I tend to just work on four fingers at a time so that you can work across all of them once you've picked your airbrush up. You obviously need quite a few stencils to be able to do this so you can spray each nail then take the stencils off then put them on the other hand and then spray the other hand just for saving time in salon really spraying over that negative with an overspray and this teeny one on the tip there now the large one overspray again Spraying this normal stencil and then air only to make sure I dry them all. Oh, that one's splattered a bit, look. And then I peel them off and swap them all around. So I put negatives on some hands, some fingers, sorry, and normal stencils on others. And I just build the layers up. I did actually have to cut all the sound out of the videoing. The airbrush compressor is loud and um, it would have been rather annoying for you to listen to whilst watching the video. I love those negatives. Look how that looks when you take the big one off. Yay! So airbrush as much as you like, then top coat with a no wipe top coat if I've painted by hand I often double top coat over the artwork this airbrush paint is so thin and so dry come the time I top coat it I tend to not bother I tend to just use one coat of it and it's fine and they last the duration of three weeks without chipping off so my final touches on this set of nails was, were just the crystals. I laid a few crystals on to make them extra sparkly. And I um, was so proud of these. My client who was wearing them, she went to New York and ended up being proposed to. So she had a beautiful sparkly diamond ring to go with these nails as well. I hope you like them. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again soon.